Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the official, the raw deadlift accessory variation <laughs> tier list. So we're gonna help you. First off, I'd always like to say a little. Um, what do they say at the uh, you know the prescription meds and stuff? They uh, oh disclaimers. Disclaimers. This is half educational, half entertainment. So take it with a grain of salt. We're here to enjoy ourselves and hopefully you enjoy yourself too. This is avi.lu on Instagram. I'm Salah Mike. New videos every single day on the channel. Be sure to subscribe, 3sb.co if you want to cop the merch, the highest quality gear in the game. What exercises first to build my ass and to build my deadlift? Let's start with, what are these? 45 degree back <laughs> extensions. We got the one and only, the legendary, and if you don't know, you should know. Uh -huh. Pete Rubish, um, and he swears by these movements. It's a back extension? Yeah, so he's going back extension and he heavy loads them up with a barbell. That's a lot of weight. To more emulate a deadlift. Uh, you see a lot of Chinese weightlifters do similar things. Either they'll put it on the back of their head to load it, or I've seen them deadlift it as well. Um, I think it's a good movement, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes the range of motion you can get there, although your lower body is stable, I think you'd probably be better off just doing an RDL. So if I'm trying to build the biggest deadlift that you can, personally, I'm probably throwing this in like a C. Okay. Right? I think most of you could build a five, 600 pound deadlift without even ever doing one of these guys. Right, I haven't done these. And you're very strong. Maybe I could be stronger. Do we need some street cred here? What's your best deadlift? Uh, 430. And mine's 705. There's your street cred. Oh. Is it 4.30? Sometimes I forget. <laughs> it's 4.30, it's 4.30. 4.20. What's next? <laughs> what are these? Belt squat? Oh, we got a belt squat. Yeah. Belt squat's a great movement. Um, I think especially for the sumo deadlift, I think it's uh, not talked about enough that the stronger your quads are, the better your sumo pull is going to be. A lot of times, I think the fits bows took the sumo, and because they got fat arses that they do sumo so everyone thinks that the sumo is for a fat arse but they actually works your quads more than your arse have you seen my arse have you seen my arse <laughs> oh my arse i actually think that any quad builder mm -hmm. um something like a belt squat which is one of the best quad builders you can really isolate and get full range a lot of tension really load that sucker up I think is one of the best movements to build muscle, which then can translate to the sumo. What are your thoughts? I agree. It's like, I, lo I love that it's not loading my upper, like I don't have to hold the weight or anything to worry about that. I'd probably say like, I don't know, I think it's A. Yeah, I would, like I'd probably go A or S. Um, so I guess the other disclaimer is, if you want to build your deadlift, the only thing that matters, 90% plus, is deadlifting. Yeah. You can build the biggest, baddest deadlift in the world by simply deadlifting. It's gonna work all the motor function, it's gonna build the muscles, and it's gonna work the pattern that you need to build a big deadlift. It, it hits all kind of three categories of um, building strength, the, the, the skill, um, the muscle itself, and the, the, the motor recruitment. So um, That goes for all squat, bench, and deadlift. 100%, it goes for anything. If you wanna be the best, best belt squatter in the world, chances are you should probably just belt squat. Right, yeah. Um, but, so that's why it might be hard to sneak into our S tier, but we'll see what other lists we have. Banded deadlifts. What you got? Barbell deadlifts. I've never done these before. I'm actually a very big fan of the banded deadlift. Mm -hmm. um, it emulates the starting position in, this, in the deadlift because it obviously is unaffected. Yeah. It only uh, affects your lockout. Um, same bar path, same movement. Exactly. exactly. So, not to rant, but I think uh, banded deadlifts are better than banded squats because it affects the bar path in the squat a bit mm -hmm. and almost makes it easier. It adds some stability. Yeah. Where in the deadlift, I don't think it does. Um, it may be a slight. But it, it, the friction isn't the same. So as long as you keep that bar close to you, your bar path's going to be identical. Right. Um, and then it's something to progress on. And once you become more of an intermediate or advanced lifter, we need variations to advance on or we're just going to bash our head against a stone wall. Um, so for me, actually, in this list so far, I might make it an S tier. Oh, um, besides the basic deadlift, it is one of my favorite variations because, again, the starting position is so important in every lift, but especially the deadlift, since we're concentric only. Um, it's it's one of my favorites, and it's just a little way to load it slightly different. And for many lifters, it'll teach them to continue to pull, to have patience, um, and it'll it'll really expose any bad positioning by your lockout being harder. 
We've seen a lot of sumo pullers, they get kind of that dog shitting in the lawn yeah. form and you get your low back curled over. Um, and under heaviest load to uncurl your back mm -hmm. is different than to push your hips forward and just lock out. Yeah. Our goal is just to lock out. You have to unroll yourself. You literally have to unroll under max effort and max yeah. tension. So you're not, using, you're not in a great position for that. And this will expose that. So either it won't necessarily make it better, um, but if you have that issue, this can expose it. So yeah. I would say, yeah, A or S tier. Barbell bent over rows. These are so controversial. Oh my God. What? In the bodybuilding world. How silly. Body I know. World. The issue is bodybuilders, I think, um, talk like they're the only way to lift. So they say like this exercise is better than exercise, but like what's your intent? Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, usually it's, what is it? It's just for bodybuilding hypertrophy purposes, right? I or actually, isolating. yeah. And I actually think that the, the bent over row, especially for a beginner um, or even an intermediate, um, that the bent over row is a great uh, exercise for, for deadlifting. I it, can see how it's, this is more like effective for deadlifts versus if you're bodybuilding. Because like you, you working your erectors, I think is the part that they talk about. It's just not efficient yeah. in bodybuilding. You can isolate with just like chest supported. But with this, it's like you're, you're in that position that challenges your posterior chain. Yeah, I would agree 100%. And I would even say, even if your goal is hypertrophy and bodybuilding, mm -hmm. if you're a beginner or even early intermediate, that a bent over row would still be good because the amount of weight that you'll be rowing won't be overtaken by your low back. Unless Where, you're in shit form. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean? So for me, to get a really good stimulus on my lats, yeah, I might have to row 315, 365, 405. So it doesn't make sense to for pure hypertrophy. It would be better on a machine. But if you're a beginner and we want to learn a hip hinge, your low back probably is stronger than your lats in the beginning. Yeah. So if you're just rowing 70, 80, 90 pounds, a bent over row might be a good idea. But obviously we're talking about improving the deadlift. Yeah. I actually think it's great because again, you deadlift, maybe do some, this is some old school powerlifting and I think it's tried and true. You do some deadlift sets, nice, heavy and hard, whatever prescribed. You do some RDLs, light, slightly lighter, heavy, hard. Then you do some bent over rows, heavy, hard. And the weight will progressively get lighter based on the exercise itself. You do those things, th those three exercises in a row with adequate volume yeah. and proper loading twice a week for four years, you're gonna get really strong. Yeah. You're gonna get really strong. My posterior chain hurts thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, yeah. But but if you would adapt to it, mm -hmm. you'd be strong. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't necessarily think it'll be an S or A, but may maybe like a B boy. Okay. How do you feel about that? I'd say B, C. Yeah, but that's fair. I think it is, yeah, B. Next is deficit deadlifts, which, I mean, this challenge is, this isn't as popular, I feel like, I don't yeah. see often. Same thing with block pulls, but we'll get to that later, I think. Yeah. Um, I think those go in cycles as well. Because the internet, which is beautiful and teaches people fast forward, mm -hmm. that these exercises go in trends. Mm -hmm. Like right now for the bench press, everyone's doing dips. Because your favorite do bench dips. presser is doing weighted dips. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? 10 years ago, dips were also very popular on a cycle and then they went away and then it became close grip and spoto press and then it went back to dips and then it just always goes in these cycles. Uh, weighted push-ups had a little run where everyone thought that was the miracle to get your bench going. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and you know, all these are great exercises. I think the deficit and as you mentioned block are just on a down cycle right now mm -hmm. and the pause deadlift is the guy. But I wouldn't be surprised within the next 10 years, we see banded deadlifts and deficit deadlifts become a little bit more popular. Yeah, um, but it's not a favorite because the starting position, right? And like, you're not, that's not gonna imitate the same starting position as a regular deadlift. Yep. But what is it supposed to teach? Like just increasing your range of motion? Yeah, I think for some people, they believe it'll force tightness because you're, having to get into a, an extended position, yeah. um, which may kick some people into a bad position. Teach them bad habits. Yeah. Yep, and I'm, I'm the same as you. I think for majority of folks, it probably, and then for the other half or 40% of people, I actually think they can pull more weight that way because it does force tightness. And I've seen that firsthand from beginners mostly, mm -hmm. not more advanced lifters. Interesting. Yeah, because the, maybe their hips are too high and they have no tension on their arms, but now they got an extra reach. Now they all of a sudden, you're forced excuse me, to almost pull the slack out because mm -hmm. your hips are all wonky. Um, I'm not a big fan. No. I think it has some merit if you want to do some lighter reps and just build muscle. Again, as we know, a longer range of motion, moving your muscles through more range, you can build more muscle. Yeah. So there's something there. Um, I just feel like it's technical too. If you're not doing it properly, like you're probably not getting the best, like the benefits from it. And it's really hard to do sumo. Um, oh. It's more of a conventional deal. Setting that up. It's yeah, really yeah, and, and just on your hippies. Um, so I, I probably, again, would probably throw it in a, seer, a C, C here. 
Um, that's how fast my head works. Maybe I said D. tier. Maybe a D. Yeah, I'm not against it. If you want to go, yeah, bottom C or top D. I don't love um, it. I think it has some <laughs> merit. Uh, and, and, and you could do that and get strong, no doubt. It's yeah. not an F. There's no failing. No. But it's probably not my first option. Mm -mm. What do we got, champ? GHD. Oh, the GHD, which I think has actually kind of fallen out of trend again, but is a great movement. Um, it's one of the few movements we can attack the hamstrings both from both joints, right? It's a, it's it's um, uh, yep. Where obvi obviously the RDL, depending on how you perform it, you can do that, which is why the RDL is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You do a little knee bend or the good morning with a little cheat in the knee. Um, but something like a leg curl or, or uh, other isolation movements, you're only attacking the knee. Um, so I, I think it has a, a lot of merit to it. I think it's great for athletics. I think it's great for injury prevention and general strength. Will it directly translate to your deadlift? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's like kind of far removed at this point. It is. Kind of. But if you want to get really strong over the next 5, 10, 15 years, we got to build that muscle and stay injury free. And that's where the, the RDL the abs, the planks, the the GHRs, et cetera, et cetera, come in, the rows, you're building your lats. Yeah. So I think it's good. I think you should do them. Um, and and I'd probably put it top C. Um, I, I think obviously it's not as specific yeah, to deadlifts. Um, not even a barbell movement. Yeah, it's not a barbell movement, but if we're talking uh, accessories to a deadlift, it's one of my favorites, I would okay. say. We're judging the deficit deadlift based on a variation. Mm -hmm. Right, variations for those that don't know are something that should be closer to the comp lift or the goal that you want to increase. Where an accessory, again, is just building the framework for that lift. So we're almost judging two different things here. Yeah, same like that falls in the same category as lap pull downs. Right. It's not specific to deadlifts, really. Right. Is that what's next? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, is that that's not a deadlift variation? Mm -hmm. It's not going to build our deadlift, but I think it's probably top one or two accessories to any power lifter mm -hmm. a bigger back's going to allow you to be a better squatter bench and deadlifter or again over the five and ten years sprinkling if you've hit a plateau on your power lifts and you just start doing lap pull downs probably not going to break the plateau yeah but if you build a bigger back over a year five years ten years overall you will be a better power lifter so again we're kind of ranking two different things like bc yeah in terms of accessories i'm putting it yeah and probably in an a or b but in terms of, yeah, deadlift, probably nothing. You could be the baddest deadlifter on the planet, especially these lightweight sumo boys I've been seeing on TikTok, <laughs> and never do a lap pull down in your life. Can't even do a pull up. That's Kids true. are pulling 800 pounds by their fingertips with stick that them in their hand. Me. I pulled like 300 before I could do a pull up. Yeah. Or three You're my favorite TikToker. <laughs> okay, next is leg press. This is some OG shit too. Shout out to the one and only Ed Cohn. If you don't know, you need to know. Go Google around. Ed Cohn, especially conventional, but for any lift, um, gives a lot of credit to the leg press. Hmm. Uh, and like I mentioned before, I think anything that builds your legs, and like we keep kind of comparing this bodybuilding, powerlifting world, accessories are kind of made to power lift, or excuse me, bodybuild, mm -hmm. and variations are kind of made to powerlift. Right. And a powerlifter needs a combo of both. Um, I think the leg press and the belt squat are two of the absolute best things you can do um, to, to build general leg muscle and strength. Uh, again, if your number one meat and potatoes deadlift mm -hmm. isn't getting proper volume, proper technique, proper attention, leg press ain't going to help. But if you have all your ducks in a row, uh, I think the leg press is one of the greatest things uh, you can do for, for powerlifting. Just Especially the position like... you're in, right? You can even see it in the picture there. They're they're in the almost a starting position for a conventional deadlift. Right. What are these called? Oh, Nordic they're, curls. I'm like what, what country? From the Vikings. <laughs> Known for like an eccentric, you know, kind of an isometric on the hammies. Again, it is the knee first flexion. I th I think it's fine. I think they got a little bit overrated. Yeah, it's like it's like the novelty. Like, oh, look at this. It's so cool. It is, weight, it's body weight. It is a little bit of a party trick. Yeah. Because then it is the same idea as a curl. Obviously, yeah, it's like open open range. So you're using your upper body rather than curling from your uh, calves. But like to me, uh, yeah, I, I say a little bit novelty. I think it's fine. D. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. I, the, the truth is, too, is like a really good Nordic curler uh -huh. isn't going to pull a lot. No. 
But we grabbed Pete Rubish, who's a bad MFer on the deadlift, and he could probably Nordic curl and never tried. You think so? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'd be I don't know what that's second. called. We're like, this helps this, but then this doesn't help this. Dan and I talk about this. It's like all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. That's nerdy, but true. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those. Yeah, it is one of those. Pop deadlifts. Oh. My favorite. Are they favorite. your favorite favorite? <sighs> they're suffering right now. Oh, no. Yeah, they're not. I'm, I'm struggling. So but the pause I, deadlift, I think. Um, I do like them a lot. I don't know for a fact, but I assume it's kind of made popular more by the Russians and the Bulgarians who pausing in different positions in weightlifting is very, very common in the snatch and clean and jerk. Mm -hmm. um, the clean and jerk and snatch are taught by positions like pull one, pull two, mm -hmm. um, where the deadlift is not. And they pause in those different ranges because the momentum and the positioning in those uh, ranges are different. Yeah. Where the deadlift, we just think of one smooth motion. Um, in powerlifting, you might use it uh, as a self-limiter. So either it's your heavy day and you don't want to um, push all that much, you're far out from a meet. Yeah, and limiting so, your absolute load. Or on a, on a lighter day, again, overall limiting the, 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 the total load yeah. um, that you're handling. Um, or uh, what I think it actually does best is teaching some people positioning and yes. pace. That's what I implement them for and that's why I use them a lot too, especially with sumo. It's yeah. hard to find that like starting position. So in order to like focus on that part and be very aware and attentive of like where your position is right off the ground, I think it's pretty helpful. Also like building tension and yeah. you can immediately see like once you break off the floor from the floor to the pause, I see a lot of people do this wrong too, but that's, that could be. Yeah. If you, if you jerk your deadlift, it's really hard to pause an inch off the ground. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cause you're, you're, you're begging for momentum. Exactly. That's the thing. People pause yeah. at their knees. I'm like, you're already locked out. What yeah. are you pausing for? Like, and, you just and, took it off. And if you have a huge issue at your knees, mm -hmm. we could maybe set you up to pause, right. but that's not helping the jerk situation. As a variation itself, it's still probably S or very top A tier. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, throw it up there in the S. -er. I'm going to do S. Yeah. Love them. Back squat. Barbell back squat. Um, I think it's great. You know, again, you know, quoting someone like an Eddie Cohn. I, I don't know why, when people got so soft and you guys got soft when I called you soft last time. Because you know I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about... You. Well, if it hurt you, then then you you're soft, need to right? Look into, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Um, kind of playing into what we we're talking about. Because people are like, "Man, I can't progress my squat and my deadlift at the same time." Like, you can, mm -hmm. and sometimes things just don't always hit the groove. Yeah. That that's not always dependent on the lift. But I think building strength in your legs, building strength in your quads, especially again as a sumo deadlifter, um, Ed Cohn did a lot of very close stance high bar stuff, um, pauses, different situations. Um, yeah, I agree. It's probably, a. yeah, probably bottom A. Um, uh, the belt squat and the leg press, I probably would put above because if you're trying to just build leg strength, we can isolate those things a little bit better, yeah. load them a little bit better without focusing on technique, stability, and our upper back shelf. Wow, that sounded really smart. I've done this for a while. Some of the TikTok <laughs> said I just discovered deadlifts. You? Yeah. Interesting. That's definitely not true. Um, I think maybe I just invented deadlifts. That's all of them. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> That's passion. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys like these cheers, if you want to get better at your deadlift, answer or ask us questions below about the deadlift. We have a pro power lifter, one of the best sumo pullers and great coaches in the world. I got a little bit of experience in the game myself, so maybe we can dive into more specifics. If you have a issue with your deadlift, we'd love to help you. Um, so comment below. Follow Avi on Instagram, avi.lu, I-L-I-E-U. Yes. I'm Solomon Mike. Everyone want to find me through sb.co. We'll catch you in the next one. New gear coming really, really soon. Stay tuned. If you want to get involved, goodcompanydiscord.com. We over me. Be a part of something big in yourself, man. We'll catch you in the next one.